Okay, so here we go. So um, today I'm going to speak about Creative Commons licenses. I'm going to, this presentation has a lot of images. I'm just going to, to, um, to start speaking again about copyright and trademarks. Uh, just to, to remember what Nuno I said this morning and then just to enter on the Creative Commons licenses. Um, I will give you the presentation at the end, so every slide has a link for you to find the source of the picture or more information connected to it. Um, concerning intellectual property, you already know uh, because you have a session about copyright, so we are speaking about cre uh, creations of the mind. Uh, we speak about uh, too many things that we use every day in our life. We can mainly, we are speaking about two main areas. From one side, we have the industrial property concerning trademarks, patents and designs. And on the other side, we have the author's rights, copyright and neighboring rights. Um, when we speak about intellectual property, we can speak about the photograph. If I take this photograph on the on Tower Bridge and I'm going to publish on the internet, on Facebook, Many of you, I believe, you have a social network account. You all agree on the terms and conditions, but you never read it, I believe. <laughs> you don't know that many times when you agree on the terms and conditions of a social network platform, you are authorizing the platform owner to have the, the rights to, to use the, the content that you publish there. But also, I don't know if you know that if you want to take a picture of these kind of buildings, architecture buildings, uh, you can post it on the Facebook, or maybe you, you need to 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 cover all the architecture buildings and to identify the the author, the architecture author, the year. You don't need to do that because in Portugal we have a thing like it's written on panorama, <laughs> and I'm copying <laughs> Eric Schneider <laughs> on the book. But in Belgium till 2006, we you didn't have the freedom on panorama. So um, in a sense, you need to cover up the sculpture. In Portugal, there is, there is an article in the copyright code, in author's rights code. It's Article 25, 75 is one of the biggest articles that you have in our legislation that allow us to, to take a pictures of objects, of sculptures or architectures that are built to be on the square, for example, and we don't need the permission of the author to do that. So we need to always find this kind of permissions codified in some certain legislation. You can find more about the Freedom of Panorama if you go to the Communio website. They have these amazing best case scenarios of copyright. They have another booklet about parody, parody in France, and the exceptions of libraries, I think, in Estonia, I don't know. Also, when you are speaking about intellectual property, you are speaking about trademarks or logos. Uh, I give you the, I, I, I came here today with the NASA logotype. This, this lettering is in public domain now, you can see over there. Also, if you want to use the NASA logo you can do like the um, ceramic exhibition about Kintsugi. This is one is from Tom Sachs, but also you can make a, a collection of uh, um, of uh, fashion design. This one is from Aaron Preston. And if why they have made that is not because they are famous, is because they they went to the NASA webpage. They have read the NASA regulations, and if you go there, you can see that everyone here can use the NASA logo to create merchandising. There are some conditions that apply. One of the conditions is that you cannot tell the public or the, or the consumer that you are in partnership with NASA, and you need to submit the, the work that you do to NASA for approval. But they won't ask you money, so you can do that. Uh, another thing that uh, sometimes is important for you to understand is that uh, a single object like a, a lollipop or chupa chups can be protected from different, um, different um, laws, from the trademark law, from the pap patent law. Uh, I don't know if you know that the lollipop has a patent in the USA, but also it has a trademark register from the logo. 
but also this trade, this, this design is protected by copyright because it was drawn by Salvador Dali and the way that he has created the lettering and the, the typo is protected also by copyright. So in one single object, you can have different ways of protecting the, the same product. So today I'm just talking about author's rights. Uh, as Nuno was telling you, uh, to have the protection of author's rights, you don't need to register. It starts um, uh, when you, you create, when you exteriorize your idea. Then after you have the protections of copyright or author's rights, you, you have the exclusive rights. You can license your work, you can authorize the user work to other, per to other persons. The license, uh, the copyright license, don't transfer the ownership of the copyright. They only give you authorizations for different types of uses and permissions. Um, usually, um, the most commonly known licenses in the past were the software licenses and they were part of the beginning of this kind of open movement that you are going to speak a little bit after. Software, if you don't know, is also protected by copyright. Uh, at the beginning, they were trying to discuss if soft software should be protected by industrial property or copyright. They have decided by copyright because it's longer. The protection is longer. We don't need to register. And since they, we have more harmonized laws in the world concerning copyright, so it would be better for this to protect software with copyright. Um, like Nuno was saying, we have different times for the protections of copyright. In Europe, in the European Union, you have the protection of databases, it's a sui generis rights, it's 15 years. Then 50 years for the neighboring rights, like performances and 70 years for the author's rights or copyright. I just want to give you some, some details about public domain. For example, Mona Lisa is on public domain, is one of, I think it's the most expen expensive uh, portrait or, um, uh, in the world. When it was created, there was no copyright, so it was already entering the public domain and also is one of the works that have more derivative works from the Mona Lisa. But if the Mona Lisa is on public domain, the, the derivative works are protected by copyright. So you cannot use the Mona Lisa by Salvador Dali and use it as in public domain. Also another curious about the public domain is that usually we say that some works extend to the public domain after 70 years or enters in the public domain. But usually we cannot uh, start counting the 70 years on the day that uh, it makes 70 years uh, uh, when the author <coughs> has died. We need to wait till the 1st of January of the next, the following year. I just give you this, it's in Portuguese because it's a um, newspaper from Portugal. Uh, in 2021, I believe, 21, George Orwell enters into the public domain. And there was a publisher that starts a new edition, but the, it, they were violating the copyright of the, the, the copyright owners because they need to wait for the January 1st. Usually January 1st is the public domain world day. And in Portugal, at least, the, our national library uh, um, uh, with the, the Wikimedia Portugal, they publish all the authors, the Portuguese authors that enters in public domain on the web so you can know it. Also, I'm going to skip this. Uh, this reference is like Nono was saying, Chopin is in public domain, but Maria Joan is still alive, so you cannot use a record because it's protected by neighboring rights. Also, the public domain, um, uh, a work can enter in the public domain after that deadline, but also it can enter in the public domain if the author uh, or the copyright owners um, dedicate the works to public domain. That's what happens with the World Wide Web. Uh, WWW was discovered in CERN, and CERN offered the World Wide Web to the public domain when it was created. So there was no copyright protections to, for that. And again, Comunia, the, the best case scenarios that I was 
telling you they dedicated that to the public domain. They put a CC0 stamp. I'm going to refer after what that means. So in the world we have different um, different legislations, like Nuno was saying, Mexico's in black because it has the life and plus <laughs> one other year for the protection of copyrights. But if you have a world in different legislations, a different areas, when we go to into the matrix and into the World Wide Web, some, some situations become complicated because uh, how can we share our work in the web or how can we search for peop other people's work in the web and have the certain that we are uh, respecting the copyright. Um, and that's one of the things that started with the free, the free software movement by Richard Stallman in the 60s when he started this kind of uh, idea that he developed software, but I, he, he didn't want any copyright. Then we have different software licenses that start to appear. Now they are known as open source uh, software licenses. In the beginning it was free software, but then the industry uh, was afraid of the word free, and they changed it to open. Um, the first one most commonly known is the GNU licenses. Then we have the Berkeley software, and the most commonly known noun is the Mozilla Foundations and the software licenses. Mozilla Foundations start and um, uh, start this kind of more corporate license for software, and they are one of the foundations for many of the open software licenses that we know today. Uh, one of the characteristics of the GNU licenses is that they were copyleft. Copy left is the symbol uh, opposite to copyright. And the idea of the copy left is that if you find an open access work that has a copy left license, we, you can create and modify that work, but you need to put the same license as it was on the first work that you started. Why the copy left license appear? Uh, it appeared because when the, the, the programmers, the software programmers, starting to put in the market free software or open access software uh, without a copyleft license, uh, most of the corporations started to use their, that, uh, that same software to create derivative works, but they, then they closed the works with copyright. And the copyleft um, license is to promote this access of the works, so everything is in the free, the free space. A follow-up of this license uh, are the Creative Commons licenses. The Creative Commons license, they appeared in 2001 in Stanford um, by a group of professors. I only remember Lawrence Lessig, I don't remember the name of the others. And their idea was to, to create easy, easy copyright license that they could like stamp in the work and to allow the users to understand what they could do with that, that kind of work. This makes sense is also in the U United States because the United States sometimes they, they advance with criminal charge against students, for example, just for share academic works that they download from this kind of big uh, big companies. In Portugal for us is a bit strange because we are used to share our work in the universities and to make copies of the books without any problems, but there are some countries that this can be uh, a criminal action against you. So copy, uh, Creative Commons licenses, they are license of copyright, the, you as an author, you define the conditions, the user can understand what kind of permissions that you are granting him to use the work. We have now six standard licenses, two public domain instruments, and uh, they are universal, perpetual and free. Why we say the Creative Commons licenses are universal? Because they were translated, translated to different languages, but also they were translated to the different um, legal, regime, regime, legal matrix around the world, so they can be used in court to defend the use of uh, some work. Mainly the Creative Commons licenses, um, are, uh, they, they are created around these four icons. 
the first is attribution. As the name says, you need to attribute the work to some people, to the creator. The share alike is the same, it has the same icon as the copyleft that I was referring to before. Then you have the equal icon. It means that you can use a work but makes no modifications of that work. And the non-commercial is that you can use the work but you cannot exploit the commercially uh, taking any commercial advantage of that the same work. By the combinations of these four icons, you can have the six licenses. It starts from the most open one, is the CC BY, it's just attribution. If a work has CC BY, you can modify the work, you can sell it, you can do everything that you want, but you need always to attribute, to recognize uh, the intellectual creator. Then you have the attribution share alike. It's the, what I was saying, you need to attribute to the work, but then the, the, the work that you produce, it must be licensed with the same licenses. Then you have the attribution non-derivatives, is that you can make no modifications to that work, and you have the reflection of the, those three licenses, but without any permission for you to, to take any commercial advantage of that work. Uh, the Creative Commons license are what we call three layers of licenses. They are human re readable, they, they have a legal code, and they can be read by machines. Uh, when we say that we, they are human readable is that if you link one of the license, many of you can read that and understand what you can do. The legal code is that if you, then you click one of those links, you can have the legal code of that license is like a PDF with eight pages and all of the legal terms that you can present that in the court if you have problems. And also it means that uh, machine readable, it can be read by Google and other machines. With a Creative Commons license, you can license copyright, neighboring rights. With the version of 4.0 of the license, you can also write license databases. You cannot license, more, uh, license moral rights. You cannot license industrial rights like trademarks or any of the personality rights that may appear in some of the works. Um, also, not only the, as I was speaking before, we have six licenses, but also we have two public domain instruments. This is the public domain mark. Uh, it means that if uh, I'm a Portuguese and I know that the work of Fernando Pessoa uh, is entered in the public domain, every time that I, I um, find his work on the internet, I can put this mark and in this way I'm telling the other people from other countries that the work of Fernando Pessoa has, enters into the public domain. And the CC0 is when I want to dedicate the work to the public domain, even though I'm not dead yet. I'm sorry for this. How can you choose a CC license? It's very easy. If you go to creativecommons.org slash choose, you can just answer um, all the, the two questions and then it will give you the, the selected license. If you want to help others to attribute, you can click there and to, find, uh, to fill your name. And also if you want to have, for example, you have a, a web page, you, can, you have the codes so you can insert on the, the web page so it can be machine readable. Um, you, usually I recommend people to go there to, even if uh, you don't want to choose a license to license your work, if you find some work on the web that has a CC license, you can go there and when you answer the two questions, you can understand easily how this kind of the six license operates. Now they, have, they are using, in the Creative Commons, they have a beta test also for the licensed user with a different template, but it's easy to work also. How to search for Creative Commons works on the internet? You can Google it, now Google on the advanced search for images, you can find the usage rights and you can choose the Creative Commons license. So all the works that all the searches that you are going to appear are under a Creative Commons licenses. You can go to Openverse. 
Openverse was a project by Creative Commons and WordPress. It has 60 million of items, all licensed with a Creative Commons license or in public domain. Um, most of the, these collections are in those, in those search, search uh, engine. Also, you can go to CC Mixer if you are looking for music, licensed with the Creative Commons. Um, you can go to Europeana. Europeana is a project by the... Uh, is a European project that aggregates most of the... some of the European museums. You can find a lot of images and maps and industrial heritage. But for example, like I was, uh, I was telling you before, if you find a photograph, even if it's too old and you have a Creative Commons license over there and that one is CC by Sharealike, you know you can use this photo at least for the license to make any commercial product. The problem is with the personality rights because since we have a person there, at least in Portugal, this is. Uh, I, I didn't translate this slide, I'm sorry. Uh, but in Portugal, at least, you can find this article in the civil code. You, you are not allowed to make money from a picture, from the image of another person without that person authorizing you by writing. The Smithsonian has a project that is site.edu. This one is one of my favorites. They, it, took, it took like two years, I believe. They work also with the Creative Commons and other associations and they have 4.4 million of artifacts, digital artifacts, all licensed with the CC or in public domain. The Smithsonian has, um, has created two different um, licenses. Sometimes they refer to uses conditions apply. This, um, as Ms. Solanes will tell you when you click on the, the user's conditions, sometimes they don't have sure that the, the work is on public domain because they could not paper trail that work. So they are advising you not to make commercial use of that kind of work because they are not for sure. But in other types, when you see the CC0, it means that the, the work is in public domain, you can make everything that you want with that work. And just to end, I'm going to talk, because also Nuno asked me to a little bit to speak about this for preparation for tonight, about open business models. Because uh, sometimes when uh, I'm trying to present uh, the CC license, many creators ask me, uh, oh, I don't, I don't want to, to license my work with the CC license because I need to make money. How can I monetize the work with the CC license? So we have different, different models, different way of that. Um, the open business model is a way of you to manage your deliveries with different license. It does not mean that if you are going to license a music with the CC BY, that you need to license all the music with the CC BY. You can just license, for example, a track of your album with the CC license for you to, um, to, to take a leverage and to get to know the music that you are playing to mo most widely and then to block the rest of the music. You can manage this way in different ways. There are some risks uh, when you use the CC license or materials that you find online. Uh, sometimes you have the copyleft or share like, share like license. Sometimes it's difficult for an artist to manage all the license. You need to have an archive on your, uh, on your computer to identify all the work that you have found and to, to create this kind of database of licenses. You have, but also you have benefits. Like I was saying, you can increase your user base because it's easy for a work that is CC licensed to, to flow on the web. You have sometimes uh, security. Uh, you can reduce costs. How can you reduce costs? Because if you are using uh, works that are CC licensed, you don't need to talk to a lawyer because it's easy for that. And um, you can promote scalability. And uh, the question how to make money, you can make money in different ways. 
Um, usually, I, I like the word of freemium. Uh, the, the word freemium, the concept of freemium is mostly used on apps, on game apps. They give you the, the, the game for free, but if you want more coins or more lives, you need to pay them. So, and the way that you can, how can you implement this kind of freemium concept? It's easy. Um, I, I am sorry, uh, I was mistaken. Um, you can, for example, the NAND project. The NAND project is a database of icons. You can, you can go there, you can find the icons that you want to use in, in, uh, in your work. They are CC licenses. Uh, but for instance, if you want to use a commercial use of some of the, those icons, you already know how much to pay and so the, the author can make money with that. Another project that can be shown here today is the Open Desk. The Open Desk is a project where you can shop for furniture, you can download the models, they usually they make contact with you with the makers that are living here in Aveiro, for example. You can contact the makers to make your own desktop or share. Also, one of my favorites is Cars Against Humanity. Cars Against Humanity was launched with a CC license. I don't know if you knew already. Uh, you could download the, the game for free. It was a way that they leveraged their opportunity and to, to get for more people to get to know this. And the, most of the people that start to play Cards Against Humanity, they got addicted. They, then they bought the cards and so the, the project enhanced. This one is a project from Strategizer. It's a company that have launched the business model canvas. People that work in creative industry, now they, most of them use this canvas to, to start de uh, developing their own project. The canvas was launched with, uh, was licensed with the CC license. Strategizer made money by the inputs that they were giving to people and from the, the other um, uh, additional features that you could buy to, to improve that canvas. But since it was licensed with the CC license, a friend of mine, Fatima San Simon, and, uh, and, um, and people from the Creative Commons, they created the CC Open Business Model Canvas. So uh, this idea was to teach you that even if you want to create a creative project, you can use an economic map, but uh, some of the value propositions there you can see are the common good and the CC license works so you can start uh, a profitable project with this having in mind. Uh, at last I'm just going to present two projects from CC Portugal. This one is called Copy Wrong. Copy Wrong was a project to, to, for the performing arts. The idea of this was to, you can see the video online, and the, the idea of this project is to, to reflect and to have more a critical approach on, uh, on how copyright can be a problem for creativity. So uh, you want to make some, some kind of performance, but you always find this kind of copyright barriers that doesn't allow you to, to develop your work. And I, at last, um, we have a video, you can link there, about copyright and creative work. This video is like 15 minutes, it's like a near history about copyright, about the lobbies of the industry, who, who has the money, and now this kind of works about creativity. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank I don't know if you have questions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping not, but okay. <laughs> uh, well, I will just start. Um, okay, clarification questions. I'm you going to just choose the slide of the CC licenses. Oh. Maybe it's easier, uh, like that. Okay. <laughs> well, you're saying that, okay, if you use Creative Commons license, it means that someone else can uh, use it uh, and modify it their own way, and, but there's a criteria that they must also use the same license. It depends on the license. Uh, 
uh, what you are saying is that if I would choose the attribution share alike. Uh -huh. Share alike, as the name says, is that if you find a work with a share alike uh -huh. license, you need to, you, with this license, you can modify the work, but the work that you have created must be licensed with the same license. Okay. W well, my actual question. I'm listening. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, my, uh, this also goes back to what we were talking with uh, Nuno about. Yes. But let's say if a record label or an artist has released music under the cre one of the Creative Commons licenses, I still need to study them. Uh, can, so if I'm an artist, I released it under Creative Commons. Can I still join one of these, um, well, well, what did we call them? Community management? Uh, yes, community, yeah. yes. Can I still? Uh, if you choose one of those, uh -huh. you are not asking for money. <laughs> but if I choose the other ones, the, the other ones, so I'm the people, if you choose an attribution non commercial. Uh, it means that I can use your work, but I cannot sell it or make money with that. That's for you. Okay, so I if I am the creator, I choose Creative Commons, I can still monetize it through radio and get profit I'm going from to give this. you an example of a, a work for a person over there. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll have <laughs> questions for you too, for sure. Is usually I give this example because people don't believe me. Uh, is monetizing the work? The work has a CC license, CC by NC. So what Eric is telling to me is that I can copy his book I can make photocopies of the book, I can give it to you, I can pick up parts of this book and print in a t-shirt because it doesn't put this license, no derivatives. So I can make modifications of this work. But if, for example, if I choose to, to, pay, to pick up this and print it on the, the, my t-shirt, I can do that without asking me, asking him permission of that, but I cannot sell the picture because Yes, yeah, Susan, that one. That's correct, right? Uh, yeah, I <laughs> 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 okay, thank you. I'll leave it up. If you, if you license your work through a Creative Commons license, if you can still be part of stuff like SPA or... Yeah, yeah. Well, but she can be part if she licenses with this. Still, <laughs> but she can be part uh, in 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 the the, te uh, the theory part. I believe you can be part of that. I think if you would, would ask someone from uh, SPI, they would say no. no. Essentially, because they are the ones who set the licenses. So if you're licensing through Creative Commons, you're already setting the conditions of your license, and not them who represent you, copyright-wise. But the, the, I, I mean, it's funny because I have, as I've told you before, my works are all CC licensed and I also collect. I also <laughs> collect from <laughs> SPA. Uh, and I think the whole purpose of me licensing through Creative Commons, this, this, they exist in sort of parallel words. So what worlds, what I intend to try to avoid is I want to promote the idea of people being able to use uh, whatever works I create with a certain degree of certainty of what they okay. can do and let me deal with the consequences of maybe licensing stuff against the will of an entity that actually represents me. And the legality of all of this is Sincerely, maybe... I don't know the regulation. <laughs> maybe <but> here... <laughs> Loss in translation, maybe, but um, but it's an interesting question that you've made. I don't know the regulation about uh, SPA, so to become a member, I don't know that. But only um, legally speaking about the copyright uh, codes, uh, since you are not uh, opening uh, and you are reserving to you with this free license, you are reserving to you the opportunity to make money with your work you can go to the one of these societies and collect because, for example, you can license this music online 
I, what that means? That means that if I find your music, I can share your music with my friends without asking you permission for do that. I can share the music on my web page if I don't have any advertisements, because if I have this kind of advertisements in my web page, in I'm making money with my web page with the clickbait. Mm -hmm. So that can be understand that I'm making money with your music. But if I'm a radio for profit, for example, and if I want to pass your music on the radio, I need to pay you. <laughs> And the way that I pay you is through the collective societies. That's my answer. Yeah, I thought maybe I could add something about yes. these choices of license and what 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 uh, what thought process I went through and what are some of the possible benefits and disadvantages because I thought a long time like about what l benefit to do and what 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 license to do and I've, I've been involved a lot in all kinds of creative. Uh, commons and free software and open source adjacent spaces so of course my first idea was i'm going to give it the open source license but then of course this also <coughs> i guess is represented the first project i did that had an actual like commercial like i know something that was going to be sold and that i thought was going to have some uh, you know be, be have a some kind of economic value because you know, if you if you write a small blog post, you don't think anybody is going to make a lot of money of the blog post you made. You know, it's not going to so. But if you write a book, it represents, and also something that's going to be around for some time. Because I published in 2018, which is already five years ago, which feels like an eternity to me, and it's, it's still <laughs> around. So, so then of course my internal like uh, my idea of ooh, I need to somehow keep some. You know, I, uh, it's also then it becomes more scary. Also, I think to attribute a license so and an is and so but i was like no i need to be if i defend these values i, I need to be consistent with them and uh, but then the non-commercial i know that there is people that really hate me for this that i did the non-commercial one and not the more one of the two more Opens open ones that one um and then so i started thinking about it i think the for me the difference between the non-commercial and maybe the attribution share alike is 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 not even a question of money because in the end you don't make so much money yes. with books because you have to think you make maybe one to two euros per copy of the book and then if a specific book I, for my for me it feels like this book is 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 everywhere because I only go to places where we talk about this <laughs> <laughs> topic. But in, 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 in reality, there is, it's, it's, yeah, I don't know, there is between 2,000 and 3,700 copies in the world. I don't know because I don't know how many there are in the warehouse of the publisher at the moment. Okay. Um, so that doesn't, and you work on a book like this for, 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 for like years. So, so actually my actual living in income is actually coming from the fact that when I wrote this, I had a grant to write this and I go and do lectures and I do also, I do design jobs that pay me much better than, than the book. So actually for me, the, in the end, it was not so much about um, uh, money, but also about control, which is one of artistic control, which is another reason why I think uh, um, artists and creatives are n are can be reticent to apply an open license is like, when you do an open license, that means that uh, uh, that everybody can use this how they how, how they want, yes. and that's a bit uh, um, that's scary also. So, the big downside of the non-commercial is that artists now they cannot really use this work because even an artist, even if they make something in a small edition uh, that they uh, it's and they show it in a gallery or they make a small booklet that they distribute and they ask money for this booklet then it's still commercial so that's the part that's kind of hurting me now that that's not possible but on the other aspect I was like okay if it's on this one of these share like for example I, I, I think maybe more like an organization like Creative Commons Portugal would be more um, uh, w would have somebody over the weekend would have thought, oh, let's start a collective translation of this book to Portuguese or something. Okay. Like, I feel that the non-commercial licenses may be actually holding back this kind of grassroots uh, adoption, or maybe it's just too long and boring to translate the book, <laughs> I don't know. I think maybe it's holding that back, but at the same time I was thinking, yes, but if I keep some kind of control over... over um, 
Oh no, but it uh, shouldn't be holding them back because they can Creative Commons can do it and put it online and then it should be fine. It works with the license. But I was like, if people want to do like kind of publishing projects, I still felt like I, I wanted to have some kind of input like yeah. in what was happening. And now it came out in French and I really completely inserted myself. Well, they also asked me to insert myself into the process and it was an amazing, um, an amazing collaboration. And also I'm extremely, uh, how do you say this in English? Exigent, uh, maybe um, the Portuguese word is... Demanding. I'm very demanding. demanding. So, uh, so I pushed a lot for it to to confirm to my standards <laughs> of of, pu of a publishing project, and so I kind of I kind of feel a bit double about it because I feel like maybe if I would have chosen a more open license, actually there maybe would be more adaptations and more translations and more grassroots projects. Now I know that the f that these things that are here, like the the French translations, they are sort of up to you know that i got to exert some kind of creative control so I f it's very double for me like i don't feel at all like it was the obvious choice for me to choose this one and i would have also liked to you know split myself in two and do also a more open license and see what would that have changed in how the way okay. the book would have been received so just to give some some background into the, uh, the thank choice you. Uh, uh, in fact in creative commons uh, usually when um, we are um, contacted by artists we recommend for artists to use this kind of licenses not the most open because if you want to monetize or if you want to control how your work is, has been done because uh, for example eric is telling that he, he shows and that license but he's afraid that more people don't uh, are not translating the book because of that license. But for me, that's I don't think that's the reason. Because if I want to translate this, I can start a translation. I can write him an email. It's easy, <laughs> and you can get the permission. So this license doesn't not block you for that. So it depends on the the, the way that you understand this kind of situation. And just one small thing, there's like a loop, like with the book, somebody could have just scanned it and put it on a non-commercial website and that would have completely worked f to distribute it. So okay. it's also some kind of, I guess there's some kind of community thing going on where people find it sympathetic, the project of the book, so they don't feel, they feel like it would not be nice to mm -hmm. scan it and put it online. So okay. that doesn't happen until now, but that is theoretically completely possible within yes. the framework <laughs> of this. Uh, yeah, f just to comment, you can y you can scan books and put it online sometimes. Uh, w one of the problems with this kind of uh, online libraries that usually scan books and uh, just to, to for people to read them, not to download, is that you cannot have this kind of ads on your web page. Otherwise, it can be understand that understood that you are making money with the people going to the website. More questions? I think you have more. <laughs> you can I do it. <laughs> no, I'm still a little confused. For example, Nunu talked about his song being used by Toyota without. But if, if you have a Creative Commons uh, license, can't they just use it? it depends on the license. Depends on the license. Uh, if Nuno has li uh, licensed his music w with, uh, maybe with that one, <laughs> it depends, it could be, but if he had shows, uh, chosen one of these licenses, Toyota could not use it. Any kind of works that is made by a brand is commercial, even if it's not sold by that company, because it gives value to the brand, so... Of course. Even but, if but it doesn't intend to Yes. Something. Even uh, if he's not the intention, since he's connected with the brand, uh, with the trademark, since it gives value for the brand, of so course. it's commercial. But what, what if I make a piece of music for uh, some charity or whatever, and I give that license, I put that license, and it gets picked up by McDonald's? Mm. Yes. Well, yes. the only yeah. thing, under that license, the only thing they're obliged to do is... Oh. Sorry. So under that license, I'm sorry, do no, you have no, to no, jump no, in? No, 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 it's your so time now. So under that license, the only <laughs> thing that McDonald's is obliged to do is to recognize you as the author yes. of, the, of the song, and that's pretty much it. So again, risk-taking, this, <laughs> this is where it's at. 
but you can create the music, put this license, for example, and even though if you have put this, that license, you can give it the, the music for free for the charity organization. So you can put the, your music on the web with that license, but this does not mean that you cannot then give the, your music to other people for free because you have that, the exclusive rights. Uh, you, you, <laughs> you can choose one of the most restrictive CC license, that one, but then you can just give it for free for the people that you want. You are not obliged to respect. The, the, the only thing is that if you start to choose these lines for you, your work, then you cannot choose to put that one. <laughs> Once you have chosen ones, that's, you need to go for that one. For that specific work. Yes, for that specific work, yeah. yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, and so what I wanted to add in that sense is that it also really uh, depends on uh, you, the work you make because I think choosing a non-commercial Creative Commons license or choosing traditional copyright for me, they make sense when you're also capable of exploiting it commercially. And as a human being, you have a limited amount of time and energy. So for me, also, it makes sense to think if you make a work that, uh, like, I know, I just wrote a text about um, the social, the different social st statuses as art workers can have in Belgium and, and how that works with, like, retirement and those kind of things. And... I don't, I'm not going to spend my, you know, I'm, I'm not going to spend, I, I don't know, I don't think there's a limited amount of money that I could possibly make with it, and I also don't want to spend my time around it, and uh, uh, so then I think, but hey, it makes a much more sense to put a Creative Commons license on there, because I don't see myself exploiting it commercially anyway, and this could also, for example, as a musician be the case, like your finished, your finished uh, pieces, they are the things that that you can hope most, I think, to somehow exploit commercially. But imagine that you make field recordings and you make uh, compositions based on field recordings. It could make a lot of sense that you put your field recordings. Imagine you're recording like the sound here in Aviro now. I think you've even done that last week. Well, then you make a kind of time capsule that's kind of culturally relevant. Like you could say, okay, we we made what we we recorded what Aviro sounded like in 2023. You know, actually, I might want to put this on Wikimedia Commons or or or, or somehow on Free Sound somehow give this to the public domain because I think it makes a lot of sense for that as like a kind of resource to be yeah. shared. So I really think it also depends on the nature of the project and things that are m maybe more peripheral or that you don't have the time to really, uh, or also maybe don't represent, uh, like this text I'm talking about, maybe doesn't represent my creative project uh, uh, at its core, so it's more something to my periphery then uh, it a, a becomes a lot easier. And of course, you can still, for the core of your activity, still choose to choose the most open kind of licenses if you really strongly believe in, these, in the ideology of sharing. And, if you, and, and so th that's still a, 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 a possibility. But if you're, uh, if, you're m if you're a bit on the fence about it, it makes sense to, to think about uh, yeah, these, these kind of... Uh, um, Sorry, I, don't, I cannot find the word I'm looking for, so, but I think you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> More question? <laughs> I actually have a question. Okay. <laughs> I, was, I, I, I was just reminded of this. Uh, first, I would just like to make, uh, 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 maybe if I can help make uh, clarifications, uh, because it's, it's interesting to think about it this way. So if if you attribute one of these licenses to your work, essentially what you're doing is not saying that forever your work has to be used in this way. For instance, if you attribute the attribution non-commercial, no, no, no derivatives, the one that's most, um, the most uh, restrictive control, one. restrictive one, that doesn't mean that some someone cannot approach you and you would you would let them do whatever you want with your work what it creates is a sort of standard that's parallel to uh, regular copyright so what you're saying is this is my position regarding this work in general 
but I, I am still able to negotiate different, um, different things with, with people. I'm still able to let people, if they ask me, use my work in completely different, l less restrictive ways. Okay, so I, ca I can give you an example about that. Uh, in last week, I was sending an email to an, an Austrian society that has created a manual for sustainable, sustainable packaging. And the manual, the, it's a PDF online, it uh, uh, has this kind of copyright notice that you are not allowed to copy, to distribute, to share, even to, um, to save this manual in your computer. That wow. was the copyright notice. Wow. <laughs> but a client of mine starts to translate in the manual and, to, and she finished and I just sent an email to the organization. Can I use your work to translate and to share? Yes, of course, you can do everything. And then I asked them, why do you have this kind of copyright notice? It's very good. I, because you were advised to do that. So uh, this means that even, th even though the copyright notice was not um, mandatory, because like Nuno was saying, when you create your work, it's copyright protected full stop, then you can authorize different people from different uses. What these licenses do is that this, they, they make a, st a starting point for the authorizations yeah. that you are giving to the other you people. You create a new standard. Uh, yeah. After that, you can give another permissions, like what Nuno was saying. You can have a work with this license, and if I call you, Fatman, can I use your license, uh, your music that I found on the way with the CC by NCND, I want to use that for my party, birthday party, you can say, okay, use it for free. You are not obliged to, <laughs> to, to, be, to, be, uh, to follow up this license. Then you can choose what to do you, with your own work. The, one of the most important things of the Creative Commons is that, for example, if you want, if you put your music on the web, and if you don't mind for people to share your music on Facebook, if you put a license, I can share your music being um, um, controlled that you gave me permission. If you, if you put a music, uh, uh, if you put your music on YouTube and you don't, put a CC license, every time that I would like to share your music, I need to contact you and ask for permission. That's the, one of the, the difference about mm -hmm. this. I'm sorry, Eric, you were... I know, no, um, I know. Well, no. I, I mean, I can... Uh, here you go. <laughs> like, I, I was just... I'm, I'm wondering, though, about the no derivatives one. I'm always a bit skeptical about it because it's so close to traditional copyright that I feel you're just making things more complicated by, by adding that. The non derivatives choice. is uh, sincerely the, the works that I found with no derivatives are more scientific works that people want to control that they don't want to make any modifications. But I agree with you, it's the, the most traditional. So, so, the, so the only real, like, um, the, the, I, I guess the only real advantage as a user you share is that you know you can s save it and then redistribute it, but then only redistribute it on non-commercial platforms, so yeah. you can, so, so I guess there is some ad ad advantage to, to traditional copyright, but it feels kind of... Uh, there is some odd. advantage because uh, in Europe, I don't know these cases, but in the US, you have criminal cases for people that download articles from uh, I'm Online, for example, from uh, this kind of scientific uh, magazines online. They download it with their own credentials on the university and they just send an email for the colleagues. This is a crime because you only get to download the, the article because you have your own credentials. This license can save this kind of processes. Uh, yeah, but then it then sh should be in the public domain anyway, scientific yes. research. <laughs> oh, I mean. Do you know the relationship between Creative Commons and YouTube? Um, the relationship, like what? Yeah, like, okay, so this is, <laughs> <laughs> this is a topic that I'm still trying to get a hold of, and it's uh, this current project. Um, so we are live streaming um, and recording for archiving all these masterclasses. And uh, when you do a live stream on YouTube, 
you can choose uh, YouTube uh, common license, no, y YouTube licensing something, or the Creative Commons license. And well, the values of this project is m more according to Creative Commons, things should be open and shared and we don't want to make a profit out of this. Uh, but now I'm learning that the, within Creative Commons we have six different licenses. So that adds another question to this complex issue, is that I wonder which one of these licenses is actually connected to YouTube. So that's one question. <laughs> but the more complex thing to understand is if uh, we as a project, well, the live stream is happening through a channel. So it's already one brand, let's say. And the project itself is another brand. And we want to make information accessible. But the, inf the content that we actually have is other people uh, from all walks in life. A lot of the, the speakers we have here are talking about their own copyrighted work. So can we afford to still put this under a Creative Commons license? Uh, yeah, it just, it mi it's mixing so many different systems. The, the problem confusing. with copyright, like Nunu was saying before, is that even though it's harmonized for some sense by the Berne Convention, they are even in the European Union, they are different about the exceptions or limitations. And that's one of the problems of uh, global platform like YouTube because it's accessible by different parts of the world and the exceptions and limitations may be different. At least from my perspective or point of view in Portugal you could license with a CC license because there is an exception for this kind of uh, workshops or sessions because we have educational purposes or training purposes. And also because your brand is not a commercial brand, but it's a brand of a cultural association that has an object. But Nuno, please help me if you want to add I was, I was about to say that our, our um, exceptions and limitations statute is unfortunately a bit, uh, still a bit uh, limitative. And uh, one of the things you were mentioning, and this is always the case with situations like this, which is, um, I don't have my, my I don't have my code here with me, but maybe you can help me do. But it, it, I think it mentions that for it doesn't mention specifically for purposes of uh, teaching. It mentions reproduced by teaching institutions, which is a bit different. So there's a <laughs> there's a lot of <laughs> semantics involved. So this um, so th you could argue. Uh, if this is a legitimate use of copyrighted works or not. My position is, yes, of course, uh, it's a non-profit, uh, absolutely fair use um, situation. But uh, again, r risks must be <laughs> taken. Yeah. Just to say that um, if you go to the bottom of the um, of the question, no, of, <laughs> of the YouTube video, it says Creative Commons Attribution License. So that's the license we're actually using right now. All right. It does, because it doesn't let you choose, so it immediately attributes the this one to if it's Creative Commons, it's attribution only. Uh -huh. I wanted to ask something to to Diego. Uh, I know statistics. I'm are sorry, it's cool. Mm -hmm. It's fine. just to answer because I went to the. <laughs> where it is. <laughs> uh, number, the, the E is what Nuno was saying for institution, scientific or educational, but I was referring to the F okay. uh, for the purpose of uh, not, not For the purpose the of teaching and education. Yes. Where it is. Yeah, that, that's a bit broader. Yes. Mm. <laughs> it depends, right? 
And then the funny thing is that there is Portuguese Portuguese law might allow it, but then YouTube also, of course, has its filters and things, yeah. which they they might set up to be very broad. Like it's the thing with like uh, content ID and these kind of things. Yeah. Like you might be in the right to, for example, they have the uh, the, the critical. You have you can have a quotation for critical uh, reasons or something, and that's that's allowed. But then it might still be picked up by yeah, by YouTube already. because because yeah. they they s they try to have a, the broadest most kind of filtering because they need to cater to all these <laughs> scenarios. Also, you have another one article about conferences is the B, so you could choose. <laughs> uh, but like you were saying, that the problem sometimes with YouTube is that the materials that you use usually. Um, when people, uh, even if you go to the Creative Commons website, they on the footnotes they say every every materials in this website that are not marked as copyright, they are licensed with a Creative Commons license. The problem sometimes with this kind of conference that you want to stream, and I know of cases that is that many times is that when you use copyright protected music, because the the software is used by the publishers, identify, and then you need to argue with YouTube that that's an exception of the copyright protections because you are using it in the context of a conference, but then you enter in this kind of discussion. I wanted to ask something. Um, you know, st statistics is a headache, I know. But uh, you mentioned before that the most restrictive of the licenses are is usually used by scientific publications and I wanted to know if you know what is the no, most... Not that one, I was referring to the non-derivatives. Non okay. yeah. So I wanted to know if, um, if there's a license that's most commonly used or if different types of, for instance, music, the most commonly used license is X and... I don't know the... That uh, idea. I don't know the. I don't have any idea. I used to have in past, <laughs> like four <laughs> years ago, but I know that if you Google from State of the Commons reports, usually they publish a report about uh, the State of the Commons with with those numbers. I can, All right. Thank you. where they can, uh, because many of these projects that I've shown today, the Smithsonian, the European, uh, they start before the pandemic, but with the pandemic, most of these kind of cultural institutions, they start to use CC licenses because of the, the, the need to, to have their public uh, using the museums online and not offline. Um, one last question from me, at least, is um, as a, or what would your uh, recommendations or uh, support be for a um, newly started record label or new a artist who is just starting to touch on these subjects? If someone wants to start using Creative Commons, do you have any tips and tricks? What no, the, the, the for me there is no recommendation. I, I believe that you need to to look to your work and, uh, and ask the questions that Eric was made before. What kind of control do you want to for that specific work? And then you can start choosing the license. You can choose different licenses from the different works. For example, if you have an album with 12 musics, you can just license one openly to have these levers and to share that specific music online and then to block the others, uh, because you, you need to understand that an album is full of different works. <laughs> uh, even though if for your mindset, the album is the whole work, but legally speaking, each music is different, so you can license them differently. Also, one of my usually recommendations is to talk with ad other artists that already uh, make this kind of uh, move. Um, in Portugal, Monster Jink is a label record. Usually they have music and albums licensed with a CC license. You can talk with them online and to understand their thoughts. <laughs> I don't know if it's... Uh, 
it's not the answer that most uh, that you were expecting, but um, uh, sometimes uh, usually I I like the the open movement because of this kind of collaboration and share. Usually, usually I recommend also my clients please you uh, don't speak only to lawyers, speak with other professionals like you that have chosen this path and to understand their worries and what were their thoughts when they put a license in their work. Yeah, it's definitely nice to be linked with other other people in the same boat. So, yeah, it's good to but know. But to start, uh, like we were saying, the if you, even if you go to Creative Commons website, uh, when you go to the Shoes a License, they have this kind of notice for artists. Uh, if you are an artist and you, your work is your way of living, you need your work to make money, consider to choose a Creative Commons license and if you want to start, go with those that you, they, they are the ones that you can control more your work. And if you want to have just a single to release on the web and people can do everything, you can choose a CC BY. Um, I don't know for music because like I was telling no, no, no is more from the music, musical world and I'm from my, I'm, a, I'm more from the visual arts, but in Wikipedia now they are trying to ask people to, uh, if you go to the image, you can have the history of that uh, picture. So the first picture was licensed with a CC BY, then another artist used that picture to create another work and he goes to that page, he puts his own work and you can follow, you have this kind of the history of the same work with the different uses of the work, that's nice also. Let's wrap it up, we still have a round table tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but thanks a lot, Diogo. Thank You're you, welcome. yeah, thank you so much. <laughs>